Todd, worship team. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your word. It's life. All right, so today, believe it or not, I got slides. And if you want to know why I have slides, Alan Anderson, you can thank him for that, goaded me into it, okay? There we go. Because he said to me, this is how the conversation started. He said, you're a pretty competitive guy, right? I mean, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, right. I don't like losing, right? So, uh, so he's, uh, he's going to be teaching on Ezekiel in a little bit, and he has PowerPoint slides. So he stops and looks at me and says, you're not going to let my slides be better than yours, are you? And I went from this to... <laughs> and I went right to my office, and I made some slides. So Alan, thank you. <laughs> he knew just what to say. He just got me right in there. So... Because I think he said something along the fact of, he, he brought, I forget exactly what you used down, but you said something about age and how an older guy can't be more technical than a younger guy. I forget exactly how he worded it. I was like, oh man, Alan, you know exactly what to say. The Lord has filled your mouth. Anyways, in the name of Jesus is what we're going to be talking about today. And the text became real to me when I was reading out of Acts 19. Uh, we're going to start there. Uh, I even got this real cool clicker. So... Uh, we're going to, go, going to be going to Acts 19, 2 to 5, and we're going to start there. And it's something that I caught when I was reading it. I was just reading through it, and I caught it, then I read it again, and I read it in the NA, NASB, in the New King James, and then I did a little study on it. I kind of pulled back the words because I wanted to make sure that what I was reading, or where I felt the Lord was taking me, was actually correct. So let's start off. I know it says 2 to 5, but I'm, not, I'm going to change it uh, and go to 1. Uh, well... While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast, where he found several believers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed, he asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard there was a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience, he asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. And Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later meaning Jesus. As soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So in that part, when it says in the name of the Lord, oh, can you read that? Yeah, when they heard that, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if you have the NASB, New King James, I think the ESV, if you see that in there in verse 5, does your say into the name of the Lord Jesus? Right? And that's a little different than in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I, I thought, hmm, I really want to know what that means. How can you be baptized into a name? Well, that's where we're going. It's pretty, it's pretty exciting. All right. So we know this, right? The knowledge that he said when they were baptized in John, so he sees these guys, and he says, hey, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they replied, amazingly enough, right, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit, right? So they received the baptism of John. They were uh, baptized with water, which, which represented the cleansing of our sins, that we were being clean. It represented a new birth, right? Down with the, the old, up with the new, because of the washing of the word, and that's Jesus Christ. Beautiful picture. But John was pointing them, everything in his bapt baptism was pointing them towards Jesus Christ. Hence him saying at the baptism when he saw Jesus, what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. All right, so he said that. The, the baptism of John didn't take them into salvation, but it pointed them towards salvation which is Jesus. So what does verse 5 mean? Verse 5 means that they fully accepted Jesus and were baptized into the authority of his name. Baptized into Jesus. How do we know they were baptized into something, into the authority of his name? Because when, they were, when, they, when Paul prayed for them and they were baptized in the name of Jesus, what happened? The Holy Spirit came immediately. Right? So they were baptized into an authority. They were washed by John's. When we were baptized here, we're actually going to have another baptism, May 30th. Uh, I don't know Scott's not, Scott is here. Yeah. Scott has some uh, very close friends of his that came to him and asked uh, that they're, they're, taking ready, they're ready to take the jump and jump into baptism. So Scott's going to have that honor and, and bless it. Or, 
I get, blessing and honor, I guess, is both, right? To, to be there and baptize them, so it's going to be a special day. But when we, when we step into that, we are receiving the washing of the word, which is Jesus Christ. We're coming from death to life in a new way. And then we receive the power and authority of Jesus Christ. And we can only receive that because we believed and accepted the truth that we have been brought from death to life. A brand new life, a life that carries authority. And that authority is only found where, for us, in the name of Jesus Christ. So they were baptized into. It's amazing when you start thinking of the name of Jesus as being something you can be baptized into. But you are, right? That's what it says. It says into. Through Jesus, we have the forgiveness of sins. Through Jesus, we have been given a new birth uh, in the Spirit by the Father. Through the Holy Spirit, we have been joined to the Father with authority to release the kingdom. And I'm going to be going over verses like that in just a second. But the authority is in the name of Jesus, right? That's why Paul said to the man at the gate, silver and gold we do not, not Paul, Peter, silver and gold we do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus, get up and walk, right? So everything he was using was coming from that place in the name of Jesus. And I think right now, before we go into it, it's kind of my last point, but I'm going to say it now. The church at large has lost reverence for the name of Jesus. The Jews back in the old time wouldn't even write the name of God fully. They would write it without letters missing. No vowels. Right, or what we call vows. Right? They wouldn't even write it, but we just say it so flippantly here. The name of Jesus is full of authority. How many times have we just flippantly said, oh, oh, you know, da di da da. Right? It's no different when Jesus, when the Father said, My name is holy. We've lost the holiness and the reverence. And we're gonna read a verse here in just a second that fell upon a whole city, not just for Jesus Christ but a holy reverence that fell on a city that had to do with the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And if we really believe that the name of Jesus Christ carries authority, that we shouldn't just flippantly be using it in everyday speech. Right? I'm not saying that as a rebuke. I'm saying that as a, as a mindset shift. Right? So, so they were baptized. They are baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, and they received the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. Let's go to Acts 19.16. And this is a, or 19.13. This is a story that I'm talking about, and we all know it well. This is the, uh, the seven sons of Sceva, and we're going to read this. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves, took it upon themselves, to call on the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying... We exercise you or cast you out by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man whom the evil spirit, whom the evil spirit was in leaped upon them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them. And they fled out of that house naked and wounded. True authority... That's what it said. By the, true authority comes from Jesus. It comes from relationship with Jesus. Why are you and I able to walk in the authority of Jesus Christ? Where is, the thor where is, if we have a picture of authority, where is, if you can imagine that, where does authority sit and where is it placed? At the right hand of the Father. Right? So how are we, you and I, there right now at the right hand of the Father? which you've heard me pray this a thousand times, or preach this a thousand times, and get ready, you're probably going to hear a thousand times more, right? How do we get to that place of seat, being seated in the right hand, at the right hand of the Father? Through our relationship with Jesus Christ. So if we don't have relationship with Jesus Christ, we're not seated at the right hand of the Father, then where's our authority flowing from? It's not, right? So these seven sons of Sceva who had no relationship with Jesus Christ, that were more in love with the law, not relationship, tried to use authority that they did not have authority to use because they had, were not seated in the correct position. And what happened? The, Paul I know, this is what he said, Paul I, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? They had no authority to use the name of Jesus Christ. And because of that, the evil spirits leapt on him and beat them up so they ran away naked and wounded. Pretty embarrassing, right? But why, what did Paul have? Paul had been baptized into the name of Jesus Christ. He had been baptized into the authority of his name. And he knew that authority comes as a son or a daughter of the Most High God. 
You are there, seated in that heavenly place, because you believe in Jesus Christ. He has brought you there, and so therefore you have authority to use his name, because it's Jesus Christ who's seated at the right hand of the Father. The name that's in that throne, in that seat, is Jesus Christ, and we've been put inside him. So every authority that comes out of our life comes from seated, being seated in Christ, hence the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. I have no authority on my own. Not a single shred of it. I may think I do, but I don't. Right? So if you are not seated with him in heavenly places, what authority do you have? And that place comes out of relationship. It comes out of, out of prayer. It comes out of understanding. Let's just use any type of business, right? Pastor, he's right in front of me. Pastor Todd has a business. Cody gets to work for him. How did Cody understand the ins and outs of the business? Because he spent time with his dad. He went to work with his dad, learned it with his dad. He didn't just say, oh yeah, I know about Lighthouse. Let me look it up on Google. All right, dad, I'm good to go. Pastor Todd would never do that. When did he release Cody into doing his own runs, understanding orders, all that stuff? He released him when he felt that Cody had been with him long enough to understand the business. And then he sent him out. Let's just use a church word. He commissioned him and sent him out. In the same way, we have to know what kind of authority we under, uh, have. And the only way we know that is by spending time with the Father. That's the only way we can know that. Right? Acts 17, or Acts 19, 17. Oh, I'm going to get to that in a second. It says this. This became, this story became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. When I really broke that sentence up, It can be translated properly. The authority of the name of Jesus was exalted. The authority of the name of Jesus was exalted. So they hear this story. They're like, oh, wow. The name of Jesus carries power. Right? Because Paul had been there. He had been teaching. He had been persuading. If you see earlier in 19, he had been persuading people about the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is preached, taught, and followed by signs and wonders. So they had seen that. So they had been around the supernatural long enough to know what was going on. And when they saw other people that didn't have authority to walk in it get beat up, they said, whoa. Let's step back. And the name and the authority that belongs to Jesus Christ is going to be respected here in this city. The demons were not resisting the name of Jesus Christ. It's important to catch that. The demons were not resisting the name of Jesus Christ. What were they resisting? They were resisting the people that had no authority to use it. Right? The name of Jesus Christ has to be obeyed. But it comes out of relationship. It comes out of seated, being seated in that seat in heavenly places. The seat that Jesus so gladly shared with us. I want to take a detour for a moment. You've heard me say before that through Christ we have become one with God in many ways, and I entitled this our Christ Connection. These verses are just for biblical proof, so you don't think I'm talking crazy. right? 1 Corinthians 6, 17. This is an important one. But he who has joined himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Right? We become one with Christ. He who has joined himself to the Lord has become one spirit with him. Evidence. Number two, Hebrews 3, 14, another Christ Connection. Right? It says this, For we have become partakers of Christ if we, hold the be- if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. The Aramaic says it like this. This is why I included this one. We are sown together with Christ. That word partakers in the Aramaic is sown together. So we are sown together with Christ. Become one with God. The last one. Oh yeah, the last one, Ephesians 2.5, which is the one I preach, 2.6, I mean, sorry, which I preach all the time, is... And the Father raised us up and made us to sit in the heavenly places in Christ. The authority is Jesus. Right? We have to understand when we're praying for the sick, when we're praying for deliverance, when we're praying for breakthrough, the authority is deliverance. Now let me use a loose example. Let's just go back to medieval times, right? If the king had a messenger, what would he do? He'd give that messenger a ring. The guy would put the ring on. He'd walk away, right? Flash that bad boy around, Right? He would go into places and says, this is what the king says. And they'd look for the ring, they'd look for the signet or the seal or whatever it is. Say, he has the the seal, signet, whatever of the king, the ring of the king. Whatever he says is just as if the king is saying it. But imagine a guy going into a town, not having the ring, not having the seal, and trying to boss a whole bunch of people around. What's going to happen? Get out. Quick. Right? He's going to leave that place naked and wounded. 
In the same way, it's the same way. Who, what is the seal? The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is the seal the Father has put upon our life. Right? It's the seal of authority, which is why demons, sickness, uh, time of turbulation, outside of testing right, from the Lord, all that stuff has to yield and obey to the name of Jesus Christ because you and I are a son of God. We've been given the ring, seal, signet, whatever you want to say, of the Holy Spirit, but we move out of that place through authority and knowing our Father, not just out of saying, oh, hey, that's cool, let me try this. Right? It's the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's something that I've been trying to wrap my mind around, especially this last week. It's been about 10 days. Lord, I've been baptized into your name. Right? And we say that into the Holy Spirit, right? Baptism of the Holy Spirit is a perfect picture. We have the baptism of water, which we're going to see again in a, in a couple of weeks. And if anyone has not been baptized and wants to be baptized, let me know. But we're going to see that. It's the same word, baptism, right? You're being baptized into, surrounded, immersed into what? The Holy Living Spirit of God, which is the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Right? You've heard me say it all the time. I think he's the muscle of the Trinity, even though all of them can stand on their own. Right? The Father spoke the word, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was hovering upon the water. You've heard me say that the Father spoke the word. The word went through the Holy Spirit and land was formed. Right? All three of them work together. By him, all things are created, John says. By Jesus Christ. Even though the, the Father spoke the word, but the word is Christ. Right? By him, all things were made for him and through him. Right? That's in 1 John. Right? The authority is Jesus. So when the enemy sees the ring, when he sees the Holy Spirit that's on our life... He knows, or it knows, or whatever thing it is, the spirit of sickness, whatever, depression, whatever that thing is, knows that we are backed by the king, and we are backed by the kingdom of heaven. The authority in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to take a, a, a second and just tell you and look at how special you are to God. Now, first I want to say this before I get mistranslated. God has ultimate glory, and there's none... The, the, the fullness of the glory of God does not rest upon me and you. I just want to say that going into it, right? So don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. But I want to go to a verse, Isaiah 42, 8. I'm going to talk about how special you are to the Lord and getting ready to step into that. This is what it says. This is the Lord talking. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. My glory I will not give to another, Nope, I'm ahead. Nor my praise to carved images. So what's this saying here? What's the point I want us to catch? The Lord himself is saying, my glory, I'm not giving it. It's mine. Well, let's jump ahead into New Testament. John 17, 21 to 22. Right? This is when Jesus is praying in the garden. And Jesus is praying. We'll just jump in at 21. He's praying for the disciples, for the believers. And that they may all become one, as you, Father, are in me, and I'm in you. And that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Verse 22. And the glory which you have given me, I have given to them. So again, I don't want to be mistaken. We are not carrying the fullness of the glory of God. That's his. There's the holiness there that I'm not even hinting that we touch. But the Lord himself shared his glory, and gave glory to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ says that the glory you have given me, I have given them. What is this glory that you and I possess that the God who in Isaiah said, and I will not give my glory to another. <laughs> I hope you don't kick me out of this. Right? This verse proves that we are one with God. Why? Because technically the Lord did not give his glory to another. Why not? Because of the Holy Spirit, you have become one with God. And let's follow this bunny trail one st step further. Yes, I'm completely separate, but through the Holy Spirit of God, what? Corinthians, if we believe it or not, those himself who have joined themselves to the Lord are what? One spirit with him. So God still hasn't given his glory to another. Whoa, the reason that you and I can carry the glory of God because he found a way to make sure that his word never lied and found a way to connect you to him and so you can release the glory of the Lord that's been given to you. Let's go a little further. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 about this. Whew. All right. 
2 Corinthians 4, 6. For it is God, it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts and to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It says, for the God who commanded light to shine out of the darkness. It's not just talking about Genesis, right? Who Jesus Christ is the light. Where is Jesus Christ now? He's inside me and you. Who's supposed to be shining out of us? We are a prophetic picture of the beginning of time because God spoke Jesus into you. He made you one with him. And now the light that is Jesus Christ shines out of the darkness. Whew. Wow. When we receive the truth, we yield to the Lord and understand that our bodies, like Scripture says, are no longer our own. Evidence again, we have given ourselves, we've submitted ourselves and says, Lord, I am submitted to you. My body, again, that's in Corinthians, is no longer my own. It is yours. And he's taken my vessel, your vessel, everyone who has joined himself to the Lord, connected himself to the, him, the, him and caused light, the truth of Jesus Christ and salvation, to shine out of the darkness which was you and I. Awesome. Prophetic picture. Oof. New light. Let's go even more personal here. Have you, ever, have you guys ever watched uh, National Geographic any time of your life, right? Right, when the little baby, whatever, is born, what happens? Right, it immediately knows who his mother is, right? When we're born... Right? I told you many times before, too, like when, when, when we had our kids, what would I do? I told you I felt embarrassed. I would talk in a toilet paper roll to my wife's stomach, right? They recognize my wife's voice because they're in there, but they recognize mine because I was doing silly acts, right? Like silly songs with Larry, right? But I was there, and I was doing it, and when the babies were born, there was a connection that was there because we were speaking over the womb every step of the way. Like I know Caleb and Caitlin are speaking over the womb, blessing their baby that's in there. We're so excited, right? Two more months, another one. Hadley's not saying amen. He's sleeping. Tell him I give him a pass. When he wakes up, tell him he gets a pass for sleeping. But for anyone else who decides to sleep, you've got live stream cameras, right? And we will point those suckers down on your head. And you'll become a meme somewhere. But they immediately know that these little babies are connected with their mother. Our babies are bonded, right? They use that word bonded with us when they're born. Mm. This is why I want to pray over you today, that you know the, the Father intimately that way. Because it's there, it's in Scripture. That kind of relationship to be bonded with the Lord is in Scripture. It's in Romans 8, 15, 16. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you've received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we're God's children. Now we call or cry out, whatever your verse says, or translation says, Abba, Father. That word adopted, well, that word, sorry, it's a guess, why you speak? Uh, that word, that word. Am I missing something? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right. That word adopted. Oh, no, it's not in that verse. But, but uh, are you guys hearing that or is it me? Okay. So I make sure that's not just, okay. All right. Well, because no one's really responding to me when I'm asking. You guys are just looking at me. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's not just me. Okay. Woo. Yeah. You didn't hear it yet. Yeah, yeah, you didn't see anything either. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Jesus' own words at the resurrection. What did he say, right? He says, the Lord is now our Father. That time it was possible, right? When he said to Mary at the garden, I'm about to go back to my Father and your Father. Right? Our spirit should intimately cry out when we were born anew. Our spirit knows God so intimately that we can cry out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. It's throwing me off. I'm sorry, I got it. Let's go to 1 Peter 1 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. 
because God raised Jesus Christ from God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. That word "born again" is the Greek word you've heard me say it before, but I want to say uh, "aganeho," which means to be born anew. And this verse itself, verse Peter says that God Himself birthed you, which is why Romans 8 is true, because God Himself, the Father God, Yahweh, birthed you, and your spirit cries out to God and says, "Abba, Father." You have been connected to the Father in such an intimate way that your spirit feels Him and knows Him and cries out, Abba, Father. No separation, no strangeness, no weirdness. No, it's there. Your spirit intimately knows the creator of the universe. And last verse I want to get into. This is it. Verse John 16, 17. Nevertheless, this is Jesus, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Keep in mind that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord, right? Spirit of Jesus. And I said this last week. Remember I said it last week? Or maybe I said it on Wednesday. I don't know. I said it before, but it's worth saying again. Right? All of us would say together that if we could be transported into the days of Jesus and walk with Jesus for three days, we'd probably all say that would be the greatest time of our life. The pinnacle of our life. It's hard to imagine that what we have right now is better than those three years. Not better than Christ. Not what he did. I'm not saying that. But what we have now is better. And that's hard to imagine. Why? Because our spirit is intimately knows the Father, and we can cry out to Abba, Father, and have the same relationship with the Father that Jesus did. That's amazing. And all that comes through Jesus Christ. And I want to catch this through the power of Jesus Christ. This is a point I want to I hit home. Jesus spoke Aramaic, right? We know that. The Aramaic word for right here, for helper, many translations say comforter, helper, counselor, right? Whatever you want to say in there. The Aramaic is the word, which you'll, uh, which you'll see right here, parakleta, which is taken from two, wor- two root words, and you see it there. Can you, can you read it there? Yeah. To end, to finish, and, or to save, and the curse. So the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. I'm not renaming them. But what is a name for the Holy Spirit that rings 100% true? The Redeemer who ends the curse. The Redeemer who ends the curse. That's why, right now, our relationship with Jesus Christ, by the authority of Jesus Christ, we have been baptized into the Holy Spirit. And now why are we living in in amazing days according to Scripture? Because we have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the Redeemer who ends the curse. And so what's a part of the curse? April, the sickness that you've been going through is a part of the curse. And so we've been given the Holy Spirit to end, to, to redeem us from the curse. Carol, what's cancer? Cancer is a part of the curse, right? We've been given the Holy Spirit that's going to redeem us from the curse. The Redeemer who ends the curse. And so our job is as sons and daughters of the Most High God is to find places where the curse of the enemy still remains and by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ speak life over there. We partner with the Holy Spirit who redeems and ends the effects of the curse in that place. And that is why we need to have a fear, not a, like, not a fear, like, ah, a holy reverence for the name of Jesus Christ and the authority that comes in his name. Because when we are seated in heavenly places, we have the ring. When the darkness sees it, it must obey. We're not like the seven sons of Sceva who think it's a good idea. Let's just try using a word and see what happens. We're coming from a place where our spirits have cried out, Abba, Father. And because we know the Father passionately, he has joined us to himself in Christ Jesus and sat us down at the seat of authority so we can speak the name of Jesus, have the Holy Spirit flow through us, and allow the Holy Spirit, who is the Redeemer who ends the curse, to break the stronghold and the chains of curses that fall on people's life mentally, physically, and emotionally. That is why we live in a better day. But I want to tell you, we cannot expect to walk in this if we do not spend time with the Father. Like I said before, Pastor Todd would never have commissioned his son to bear the name of Lighthouse until his son knew what he was doing. And we need to step into that place. 
So I want to pray today that the Lord will come and that, I, that that's my main part right there, Romans 8, 15. I want us, and that for Holy Spirit, we just invite you. We thank you that you're here in our midst and we invite you, Spirit of Revelation, to come speak and breathe into our hearts. And I ask, Lord, that you impart an understanding that becomes alive, that because of you, our spirits know you intimately and we cry out, Abba, Father. That every person here right now, Holy Spirit, I pray you overshadow us with your goodness, your grace, and that your voice of revelation knowledge speak into our hearts. And that we will receive this truth in a brand new way. That we won't just have head knowledge that we are attached to you and become one with you. But our spirits will cry out from inside us and say, Abba, Father. God, we bless your name in this place. And just like in the city, we go back to verse 19 and we say, Lord, let a holy reverence for the authority of the name of Jesus to be lifted up and exalted in this place. Because Jesus, you are worthy of it all. Actually, Pastor Tuck, can we sing that one? Yeah, it's already had. God, we want to come here and we want to say you are worthy of it all. We honor you, Jesus. We honor the authority that's been given. Father, we thank you for making a way to connect us to yourself. And so that you could release your glory from our submitted bodies to fulfill scripture that said light now shines out of a darkness. God, we honor you and we bless your name. And as we've been praying today, Lord, we ask, we unite with everyone. We come together like last week. We come together to support the word of the Lord that says, by his stripes you have been healed. By his stripes there's breakthrough for you. And in